there's another piece that goes with this um, long period of helplessness. And that is that during that period, um, the adult members of the species have to invest a lot in keeping the children alive and taking care of them. You can't have a long childhood without also having a lot of help from the adults in the species. And as I mentioned, this is a relationship that you see in many species. These are actually marsupials. This is a quokka, which is a little marsupial that lives um, um, on an island in Australia. And this is an opossum. Um, and if you look at across different marsupials, these quokkas, for example, um, have only one or two babies at a time. The fathers as well as the mothers are responsible and engaged in taking care of the babies. Um, and the opossums, on the other hand, only the mother takes care of the babies, and the mother has many babies all at once. Um, the quokka actually spends twice as much time in the mother's pouch as the little opossums do. And the quokka's brain is twice as big as the opossum's brain. Now, as I mentioned before, we human beings are way off on the end of the spectrum. I suspect that at least this human mother often feels more like the possum than like the quokka. But when you look at us, even in comparison to our closest primate relatives like the chimpanzees, we actually not only have mothers who take care of babies, we have fathers who are pair bonded, as they say, who are mono relatively monogamous and are engaged in taking care of babies. We have uh, what are called allo mothers, which means parents who aren't actually, adults who aren't actually biologically related to children, nevertheless um, uh, weigh in and think that babies are really adorable and take care of them. And we have what I personally am most impressed by, which is that we have grandparents. Um, we have grandmothers in particular. Uh, human beings are the only species where women continue to live a long past menopause. And there's an increasing amount of evidence that suggests that developing that, uh, those grandmothers was the secret for our being able to have these big brains in this long period of childhood and this long capacity for learning. So as a new grandmother, this is, uh, this is a, a this is a theory that I really like a lot. Grandmothers are the key to all of human success and brilliance. Um, okay, so if this picture that I've been describing is right, this picture of our extended childhood really designed for learning, um, then we might expect to see some reflection of that in the brains of children and adults, and in fact we do. So this is a picture Show, this is a graph showing the development of, the development of nerve connections, of synapses, uh, across time and in different parts of the brain. Um, and what you can see is that early on, there are many, many, many new connections being formed. And then what happens is there's a point at which the connections that are used a lot are maintained and made more efficient, and the connections that aren't used very much are what we call pruned. There, those connections go away. So what you can see is that you really have two different creatures with two different kinds of brains. You have a young creature with this incredibly flexible plastic brain, a brain that's changing all the time. And then you have an older creature who has a very efficient brain, a brain that's very good at doing things swiftly and efficiently, but is much less flexible, much less capable of making new connections. Um, and if you look at the different parts of the brain, you can see that this process takes place um, at different rates in different parts of the brain, so that for the visual part of the brain, for example, a lot of the connecting is done within the first year when children's visual systems are established. For the language part of the brain, that process doesn't end until the children are about five, after they've learned their first language. And for this part of the brain, the part in the front, that's the prefrontal cortex, it's kind of the executive office of the brain, um, that's actually the latest part of the brain to uh, mature. And it isn't actually finished until um, people are in their um, early 20s. Now, that's, it's interesting because that's the part of the brain that's responsible for a lot of those adult skills of executive function and focused attention and so forth. Um, but it may be that not having that part of the brain online too quickly is actually an advantage if you're... Um, if your uh, agenda is to try to explore, learn, find out as much as you possibly can about the world, as opposed to acting most effectively in the world. So it may actually be an advantage for babies and young children that they don't yet have that heavy, top-down executive uh, control. Mm -hmm.